Hey, we're going to talk about graphing the cosecant of x. So, this all stems back to your reciprocal identities here, where the cosecant of x is the same thing. So the cosecant of x is equivalent to 1 divided by the sine of x. And that's important, okay? Because cosecant is all based off of the uh, reciprocal identity of sine. So what I'm going to talk about here is first, let's look at the sine. So let's go back to graphing sine. So I'm going to draw my axis in here. So we're just going to start off with not dealing with any amplitude changes or any period changes or any of that sort. We're just going to graph it just as the normal function. So here we go. Sine function. The sine curve at sine of zero is zero. Okay, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so it goes up to 1. The sine of pi, so this is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi is 0. So what I'm going to do here is for now, I'm going to dash in the sine curve. So here we go, dashing it in. Okay, so there are some other things we know about, but the reason that I'm breaking this into four is because when you broke your period into four for the function, it always gave you your critical values. And the critical values for the sine function is a maximum, a minimum, and then your, uh, your intercepts with your axis of uh, rotation. So I now have this. So cosecant. So we're now going to talk about cosecant in terms of sine. And the way that I'm going to talk about this is that if I find the sine, okay, the sine of pi over 6 okay, is equivalent to the sine of 30 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So if the sine of pi over 6, so if I were to plot this, the sine of pi over 6 is at 1 half, the point would be right here on the graph. Well, cosecant is the uh, 1 divided by whatever the sine is. So when I start to do this here, I'm now going to talk about as cosecant of pi over 6 as being the relationship of 1 divided by 1 half. Well, 1 divided by 1 half is equivalent to 2. So when I'm plotting cosecant, I come up here to 2, and I plot my point, okay? And also, I continue on with that pattern. If you notice, when I come over here, okay, that's the same value over here, I'm just following the graph, and I go up, then the reciprocal of this as its output is 1 half, then it must be 2 as well. So 1, when the sine, okay, when sine of pi over 2 is 1, so the cosecant of pi over 2 is 1 divided by 1, which is just 1. So therefore, it's just 1. So now I'm just showing you how the reciprocal identities relate to all this. And what I have here is I have a graph. Now, at 0, at zero sine is 0. Well, the reciprocal of 0, well, it's 1 divided by 0. Well, you can't have 1 divided by 0 divided by zero. So what we say here is that the cosecant function can never ever be have to have a value of zero. And the way that we show for this graph that it can never have a value of zero is called a vertical asymptote, which means we draw a dashed value and say that, that can, this graph can never ever ever be that. But remember, these are all connected with smooth curves. So what I'm also going to look for is where else can it not be equivalent to? Well, at here I have an intercept, so I'm going up and I'm graphing, so I'm drawing in a vertical asymptote. So if you notice, I have a dashed line vertical asymptote. So now all I'm going to do is come up here and I'm just going to connect these with a smooth curve because if you notice, if I did any of these, the reciprocal would just be right above it. So here we go. Okay, so everyone see those? And that gives me connected with a smooth curve. So my value, okay, remember lines go on forever and ever, but I don't actually draw them through the dashed line. And then I come down to the other side and I continue that same type of pattern with I draw the vertical asymptotes. And now I take a look at negative one, negative one half. Well, the reciprocal of negative one half, which is one divided by negative one half is negative two. So I come down here to negative two and then back over here with that negative two. And what you find is I connect this with a smooth curve. So what it ends up creating here is kind of like the inverse effect of this function. So 
what we can say here is that sine, the inverse of sine of x is equivalent to the cosecant of x. So therefore, if I invert my graph by chopping it off, right, at these vertical asymptotes, if I take this point and I invert it, it's basically flipping it up. And every vertical asymptote is going to shut it, shut it off. So I take this and I flip it down. And what I have here is just one period of the cosecant of x is now being graphed. So I hope that helps with your uh, homework or whatever you do. And uh, yeah, check back for another video.